Hi, hi everyone. This is Melia Mucks About, preparing to muck about once again in the extended universe of Final Fantasy XV. <clears throat> so we are about to venture into the Final Fantasy XV multiplayer comrades. I always do like to start my stream with just a little bit of a, a lore tidbit, give people time to realize that my stream is going, join if they want to. Um, so this is being taken from Final Fantasy XV, the official works, and their description of comrades is, The crystal imprisons the king, and darkness covers the sky. The kingdom is in ruins, and in spite of a plague of demons, somehow the people survive, flocking to the final traces of light. You awake into a world on the brink of doom. And I was also going to just hit, there's a little tiny description of a Kingsglaive member. It says, following the fall of the crown city, Insomnia, he betrayed the royals and joined a Kingsglaive faction loyal to the empire. He seemed to have died, but awakened again when the end of the world approached, with the end of the world approaching. The people of the darkened world have pinned their hopes on this man whose abilities rival those of the king. Um, obviously, being a woman player, I'm going to ignore that they are uh, pigeonholing everything into male gender, but <laughs> that does help us um, place where Comrades fits. So Comrades is going to be the multiplayer, and there's so much that I love about this particular DLC and this game. It lets the players finally interact with this world. You get to be a part of this amazing story um, that we've been going through and create a character. So if you haven't seen Kingsglaive, that's the movie that's related to this minor, minor spoiler. Um, the Kingsglaive were sort of like what the hunters were, but they were in insomnia. They were supposed to be the protectors, the ones who helped King Regis and the Lucians. And unfortunately, there was a lot of betrayal. A few of the King's Glaives sold out and there was a bunch of backstabbing <clears throat> and insomnia fell. So one of the really interesting things about this game, and I think a piece that people miss, is you're not playing one of the good King's Glaive. You are very specifically playing one of them that betrayed King Regis and Noctis. So on that note, I will go ahead and begin. And of course, it's just warning me that other people might see my online gamer tag and they can't control if anyone else happens to be streaming. <laughs> Half a year has passed since Noctis and his royal retinue set sail for the Western continent. News of Niflheim's demise floods the airwaves, but no word has been heard from the crown prince. With no light to guide them, refugees from the crown city and other parts of Lucius now gather in Lestalem, hoping to move forward as one. So I do a lot of talking about how this entire game depends on perspectives. And I think that's really important to point out too, is we saw the game from Noctis's view, so we knew Hear what happened. Hear me, defenders of the crown. The power of kings goes with you, and with power comes a duty to your kingdom. Your body is a vessel for the blessings of the Stone of Lucis. Your blade, a ray of hope, cleaving a path for the future king. And these scenes are straight from Your King's transgressions Glaive. have not been forgotten. Once the true king awakens and the light is restored to this world, only then shall you be forgiven and set free from the burdens you bear. Rise and shine. <laughs> You're probably wondering what you're doing here. Oh, Libertus! Your memories are hazy, but you remember that you are a surviving member of the King's Glaive, the late Lucian Monarch's special task force. All right, so I was going to let anyone in chat who wants to also help guide some of this character creation. I'm not going to be too picky. I don't want to spend too long on it. Um, oh, tough choices. I usually main a female, but I've also done male characters as well. I think I'm going to go ahead and go with female. And so this is an, a very interesting character generator. If Square Enix would add a few more options, break this off and sell it for writers and artists, I would pay money for this. It's, it lets you 
make such unique avatars and so detailed. Hello, Tier! Thank you for joining. Um, so it really is great. Do you have any opinions on whether I should be a male or female avatar? I'm creating an entirely new character, so I'm letting chat have some say in it. <laughs> I should see what faces are available. And the way you create the face is you actually pick two different ancestors and it gives you sort of a combination of the two, which I think is really interesting. <laughs> Someone in chat wants me to make a child from Ignis and Prompto. You know, I don't think I have the bros faces yet, but if we want to do that later, I will have to select a male avatar. So I will try and, and make that a point and remember to do that. All right, so here's our generic male avatar. Uh, we just have some beginning faces. I don't know. I kind of like the prominent nose. Oof, those eyebrows though. I suppose I can adjust those later. And what do we want for Ancestor B? You can give me a number starting at, with the first one to the, what is that, sixth one? <clears throat> Let's see. One, two, three. Should do a random dice generator. No one in chat is saying anything, so... Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, someone in chat says, see here, they have great different backgrounds. Yeah, this, the racism in 16 is weird. Um, I guess I'll just go with generic first one. Do the fourth one? One, two, three, as soon as I pick something. Fourth one! All right. There we go. Uh, no, we don't want to save this avatar. I am not done messing with it. However, I do want to select... Oh, nope, nope, select that face. Maybe I do want to finish. I thought it would give me a lot more at the beginning, but, uh... Oof, names. I'm so bad at names. Um, 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 let's see, we had Noctis, Prompto. I need something Latin. I think I'm actually going to go with T-E-N-E-B as part of Tenebrae, just for fun. We'll go with Teneb. Why not? Oh, they disallowed streaming? Did they disallow streaming? No clue? Don't sweat it. You escaped with something more precious than your memories. Huh. Your life. First of all, you're a glaive. Oh, just, just for the like name. Me. That's hilarious. The king lends us his power. We fight to protect him. Well, fought. The king himself's long gone. His power remains, though, so we got to put it to good use. I'm See filthy. That up ahead? <laughs> That's the last bastion of mankind. And it's the king's glaive's job to keep her safe from harm. <laughs> Better enjoy the sunshine while it lasts. It'll be gone before you know it. Only other light left in this world is the kind we make ourselves. And as you may or may not remember, we play a big role in that process. Let's hope that jogged your memory. All of the Stalins counting on us, Glaze. Demons ahead! Get ready! I'm not ready. Great. Another bump in the road. I've just you been pulled out of out. the insomnian rubble. What do you think I can do? <laughs> All right, Glaives function somewhat differently than Noctis and his pals, but their fundamental controls remain the same. Um, regenerating health. Glaives cannot use items to restore HP. Instead, you actually have to heal with button presses. Oof. Uh, curative spells restore HP to the caster and all comrades positioned within its range of effect. I spend a lot of time telling new players, heals are always appreciated. If you don't know how, just get near them and heal yourself. Casting spells. Hold L2 and press um, triangle to cast a curative spell or circle to cast offensive spells. 
we can actually make barriers! Woo! Uh, hold square to project a protective barrier at the expense of MP. Comrades positioned behind the barrier will also be protected from enemy attack. And that was something that Noctis couldn't do because of his injury. Uh, performing chain warps. Block an incoming attack with square to deliver a counter. A successful counter strike will create an opening for a chain warp. Chain warp strikes with your comrades to deal incredible damage. So we essentially have all of the same abilities that um, King Regis and Noctis had. It's on loan from the king. But remember, the king died. So they do actually address how and why we still have these powers. Woo! Goblins! Goblins everywhere! And can I tell you how much I love the big flying demons in the back? They're so creepy when they come by. But... Oh, Rock of Ravata! Wow, so you can see the trolley cars have been falling off their lines. That's not great. Oh, there's one of those flyers! will likely happen later in the game, but it is possible to hit one of these goblins or imps hard enough with warp strike that a can of fish pops out, and I think that is the grossest thing ever. <laughs> Alright, anything else? Alright, Libertus, where are we going? You're supposed to be leading the way, man! <laughs> Hold triangle to pick up ingredients. In comrades, we are not picky about food, you just want to have something. <laughs> I will eat roadkill. <laughs> I'm going to take a moment just to kind of pan and see what it looks like. Watch those flyers go by. Wow. Yes, we are entering the days of burnt toast <laughs> being considered a meal. So it's the beginning of the darkness, the beginning of the murkiness, and everyone is starting to fall back um, here to Listalum. This is one of the last bastions of mankind. Oh, that was a big one! <laughs> no! Big spiders! Okay, it wants me to do my magic. Oh yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> Chain warp! Yeah! Oh, you can see they blockaded. Remember for the Stalin, they had all of these. I mean, it's a really hard city to defend. They have so many openings and alleyways. I love the detail that they've blockaded and put up. Um, just various barricades. You can see all the trash. Oh, things are already bad. <laughs> Someone in chat says, I think it's funny how those things have Spider-Man style swinging without anything to hook up to. It's so true. And they're so accurate on hitting you. Ooh. Thanks for joining me in that uh, eating of payment, pavement miles. <laughs> I used to park the regalia at this gas station. Look at that! And a flyer. Look at this! <laughs> oh my goodness, the world is just going to rot. <laughs> Alright, uh, more barricades. Can't get into the cell in this way. Saber oh. test! Let's see if I can time that. Almost. Ooh, we have a mage in our group. Nice fireball. Oh, I love the big flying things. They're so creepy. Anything this way? Nope. And of course you'll notice if you kill these daemons, they kind of 
stupid and smoke and purple. That's the star scourge. Um, all of these particles are being released into the sky, and that's what's actually creating and making the darkness. Thanks, Libertus, for cheering us on. <laughs> oh, let's see. This way. Okay. Made this a little bit of a maze. See if the bench is still over here. No, <laughs> Iris's bench is gone. Confirmed. <laughs> the demons took it. I refused to touch any sort of food that was on the ground in case it popped out of a demon. <laughs> That's a can of fish. I should... I'll, I'll specify that. Uh, why well, yes, someone in chat asked if Iris that happens to be in the Solemn. She is inside. They have a lot of cameos and a lot of our familiar characters will be around. Like Core! <laughs> Someone else says I'll like eat that demon food and like it. <laughs> oh no, you don't. Cora is helping us clean out an iron giant. <laughs> People who have followed my stream for a long time know I'm not particularly fond of core. And hurry. Where are you going? Show up. <laughs> oh, just look. Oh my gosh, look at this barricade. How yeah. lovely is that? Core can yell at me. I'm going to stand out in the demon infested land. Oh, it's just, it's amazing to me how well they did with this. <laughs> I remember when there was music and light. Uh, and they strung together cars to block the entrance. There's so Open much up. I love about it's it. It's the marshal. <laughs> Open up. Well, go on. <laughs> Cora is yelling at me to go in first. Yeah, Cora's not doing anything. <laughs> Be glad you made it inside. Still rude. <laughs> The Stolen will henceforth serve as your base of operations. Rendezvous with online comrades outside the outpost. You are a capable combatant. Everyone here <laughs> in the Stalem is counting on you to keep them safe. Why? Aren't you keeping them safe? They called off the search for Prince Noctis. Without our king or crystal, we've got nothing left. I know, me, not Core. So one thing I really do love too is you can see there's people here. I've seen a lot can... of Crowns Guards in my day, but none of them can hold a candle to Core. He's in a league of his own. Uh, sure. Um, you can get a lot of gossip from them, which I think is really interesting. I thought the demons would disappear once the Empire fell, but they've only grown in numbers since then. Not to mention that the Knights have gotten longer too. The connection's so clear at this point that even the Deniers have changed their tune. If you believe what it says in the cosmogony, then one day the king will rise up and rend the darkness. But it's hard to find comfort in fairy tales when said king is MIA. Oh, there were demon deniers. That's hilarious. If the demons really are averse to the light, then they must be having the time of their wicked little lives right now. Unfortunately, we humans aren't faring quite as well. This is the only place we can live nowadays, and even then, it's not easy. But the people of Lestalem, the ones we're fighting to protect, they haven't thrown in the towel just yet, so neither should we. All right. <laughs> people call me a pessimist. But what's there to be optimistic about now? Insomnia's fallen and the king's dead. At this point, there's nowhere left for us to go but straight to the grave. Well, he's a positive chap. One of the things I do like is there's obviously lots of different opinions, too. Now the marshal wanders around like a pathetic patrolman. <laughs> Don't get me started about the prince's royal retainers. Bunch of bums, if you ask me. Wow, people do not like the bros. I'm so sad. 
Keep out. The residential area is off limits to hunters and mercenaries. Only refugees are allowed past this point. And look at all the trash. I really do like that they pointed out when you start stuffing a whole bunch of people into a city. It's not pretty. It just isn't. Oh, look, Cor again. Thank you. <laughs> That's all he says. Somebody in chat says it cuts down on the animation budget. True. They didn't have Good to luck. animate as much. Thanks for all the help, Cord. See if I can bully him a little bit. <laughs> he backs up from me. Trip over a box, trip over a box. <laughs> he does look a little afraid of me, doesn't he? <laughs> Alright, I'll stop being mean to Cord. Ah, oh, I could probably, someone in chat wants to see how far I could make him go. I could make him go all the way back to the sign. I could probably spend a while chasing him around. Poor AI is trying to get out of my way. <laughs> I'll just leave him in the trash heap. <laughs> Part of why I don't respect Kor is because he was honestly trying to take Gladiolus's job. I really do believe that. <laughs> Nowadays, Lestalem's known as the City of Light, the last beacon of hope left for mankind. That's why everyone's gathered here. Refugees are pouring into the city from all corners of Eos, and it's our job to keep them safe from the demons. We glaives fight for hearth and home, and this is our home now. Aw, for hearth and home! Yeah, someone in chat says he was trying to get Gladiolus killed, and I do kind of think that. I think if Gladiolus had died, um, he absolutely would have probably just given a small apology and offered to step in. <laughs> We're lucky to be living in the light of the meteor. It's the only thing keeping the demons at bay. But think about how many story elements have come together here. The whole thing of the power plant, the meteors. Oh, we have a radio! As of yesterday, we don't open the gates of Les Dalem to any and all refugees. Dave! No matter where you come from, all y'all are welcome. We're one people now. Y'all are in need of an escort. Give us a holler at HQ. We'll dispatch a hunter right away dangerous to go alone. I'd also like to take this opportunity to ask the people of Lestalem to embrace your fellow man and treat him with the respect we all deserve. Lestalem's the only life left. Darkness may have consumed the skies, but don't let it consume your hearts. Aw, uh, no, that's Dave, the head hunter, um, who was speaking on the radio, but he pointed out, we are one people now. There is no Altitia, there is no Tenebrae, there is no Insomnia, there is no go. Niflheim. Ah, I can't thank you enough! Holly! Meteor shards collected on quests are used to generate electricity. Scavenge for meteor shards and restore power to the town. Well, there's some in that cart right behind Holly. Can I use those? Relax. <laughs> you can rest easy now. Although you might want to thank the guy who brought you here. Anyway, I'd better get a move on. Wouldn't want to face the wrath of Kor the Impatient. <laughs> oh, Lippertus doesn't road. like him either. Libertus hands you a pair of daggers, allegedly yours. A name is carved into the hilt of one of your blades. Ooh, birth time. Uh, I'm going to be from Listolum. It's Stat-wise, it's a pretty good choice. So, Insomnia is more for mages, but he also returned your Crown City mode's, uh, made smartphone. Unfortunately, you cannot remember your passcode. <laughs> I don't even get a thanks, Libertus. Or did you forget my name? Huh. Guess you still got a lot to remember. You will gradually regain your memories as you progress through the story. Check the info menu periodically to see what you have recalled. So I really love just so much about how they did this game. Um, all these pieces coming together. Nations don't matter. It is definitely all hands on board. I need those meteor shards. Can I have We've them? We've assembled the brightest minds from all over the world, but no one's been able to devise a sustainable alternative fuel. Looks like the meteor really is our only option. Yep, and it's that meteor that's keeping us alive. Ah! Uh, crafting table, Sid! Can I talk to him? Nope. Can I craft? I shouldn't be able to craft. No. Nope. How in Tarnation is a man supposed to get his work done? without any power. Sid's still alive. Yep, and there's Iris. Someone was asking about her earlier. Dustin! 
Just checking out who all's here. Ooh, little side quest. A match made in the Stalem. Yeah, someone in, in chat says they forgot how sad it is at the beginning of the game. It's pretty sad. <laughs> A match made in the Stalem. Yesterday, a team of Kingsglaive operatives led by Libertus Ostium safely escorted a truckload of hunters out of harm's way and into the city, along with their impressive haul of meteor shards. While it is uncertain at this time whether the glaives and the hunters will enter into a formal partnership, this reporter is certain that the two would make an excellent team. If the glaives combine their prowess in combat with the hunters' perceptive powers, I have no doubt they could recover enough meteor shards to light up all of Lucius and dispel the demons for good. I'd say they got your good side, wouldn't you? Ah, oh, it's V! Yes or no? Yes or no? Should I be snotty? I think I'm going to be snotty to V. Anyone in chat have an opinion? <laughs> Right, I'm gonna go with new. <laughs> Can't please them all. Guess I should have checked with you before we uh, went to press. Privacy oh, right. is important. I suppose I ought to introduce myself. Viv Dorden, president and CEO of Meteor Publishing Incorporated. You see, that shot of you made quite a splash among the locals, so I was hoping you might let us take some more. Our resident cameraman will just follow you around and snap some <laughs> shots. Don't contract. worry, he won't get in your way. A journalist is documenting your deeds and photographs. Speak to V to review the pictures taken. So they still kept the picture Come on, element. the public is eating you up. Let's give him another helping. Uh, v does drive a couple of people crazy. I saw someone in chat wanted me to possibly feed him to demons. <laughs> I'm going to run over and see if we can do a little character adjustment. One thing I do like about this, yes, is that they absolutely anything let you I change anything with. that you want whenever you want. Um, let's edit, because I know there were more choices. All right, and now we can play a little bit more with our glaive. I think I exited this a little early, too early last time. Any, uh, once again, I am letting chat help me decide on how I'm going to do this avatar. Any preferences on hairstyle? You can start by giving me numbers. One for here, two, three, four. That way. Wow, his eyes are unusual, aren't they? I'll try one of these on. Let's see. Oof, no. <laughs> you think four? All right, we have a vote for four. I do want to see what the buzz cut looks like. Yeah, not my favorite. We'll go with four. And then as I was saying, you know, if Square would break this off, it is lets you customize so many things. I'm not going to go through and pick everything, but you can see we can add a beard, um, stubble, mustaches. Hmm. <laughs> Needs to shave a little bit. Kind of like a little bit of stubble there. Uh, you can mess with the eyebrows, eyelashes, features. We can add tattoos. I don't have any tattoos apparently to add at the moment. No face paint. Let me see what the eyelashes do. We have two eyelash choices. Thick eyelashes. Or thin eyelashes. I think I like thick. Uh, for voice, you can get a really wide range. Uh, his current voice will drive me a little bit nuts. For a hearth and home. <laughs> I don't know why that one I'm not very fond of. For hearth and home. For hearth and home. For hearth and home. That one sounds too young. For hearth and home. Too deep? <laughs> For hearth and home! <laughs> too excited. For hearth and home. Okay, six isn't bad. I might come back to that. <laughs> For hearth and home. Doesn't fit his face for me. For hearth and home! <laughs> that one I might have to just because it's funny. <laughs> For hearth and home. Okay, ten's not too bad. For hearth and home. For hearth and home. For hearth and home. Okay, that's just creepy. 
<laughs> for hearth and home. For hearth and home. Ooh. For hearth and home. Fourteen's not bad either. For hearth and home. For hearth and home. Okay, I have a vote for fourteen. I like fourteen too. For hearth and home. Ten. For hearth and home. Yeah, I think fourteen's the best too. Unless there's anyone else arguing. For hearth and home. All right. Figure, you can do everything. Height, weight, head, neck, torso, back, chest, um, upper arms, forearms, hips, stomach, rear, <laughs> legs. <laughs> um, they really should make this a product for artists and writers. I would love to create all my characters in here. It's so easy to use and just makes brilliant characters. Uh, I may add a little extra weight. I always just like adding a little weight to my characters to make them more realistic for body types. Um, to be honest. All right, attire. We get to wear clothes. Ooh, galad jacket. I will take it. We have pants. Pants confirmed. I love the flip flops. My main has never worn shoes. She lives in those flip flops. <laughs> Since they gave us clothing, we'll go ahead and deck him out. Keep the shorts. Uh, let me see, that would be bottom. I guess I can take off pants. <laughs> oh, I could be silly. Nah, I'm gonna run around in pants. <laughs> Uh, accessories, I don't think I have anything. Um, but once again, I really do like that this game will also let you come back. Sorry, it'll briefly uh, lock content while I'm in that screen. But they do always let you come back and make as many changes as you want. And that's why I tell people, don't worry too much about initial character creation. If there's something you don't like, you can always come talk to Dustin. But look at that, I'm liking him. I think I think we did a good job. Lots of personality. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I'm supposed to talk to this person over here. So you're the glaive everyone's been talking about. Pleasure. Name's Jean. I work for Exynorus. We take the meteor shards that glaives like you collect and turn them into electricity. Pretty cool, right? All that we is need cool. is enough light to drive away the demons. If you've got any bright ideas about where to send power next, feel free to share. Provide power to facilities in town to improve life for the refugees. Select a facility on the Stalem's electrical grid to power up. Um, I don't think I can do much at first. I'd say the future is bright. All right, we got a mission, Garalusa Gone Wild. Monica! Mission HQ is now operational. Complete quest to help generate more electricity. Talk to Monica to undertake your first mission. Bye now. All right. I guess we'll come talk to Monica. These tasks aren't for the faint of heart. Do you have what it takes? Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> so form a party of up to four players and undertake multiplayer quests. Here, have a look. So if you do decide to play Comrades, do be warned that the game is pretty dead. So there is a Final Fantasy 15 subreddit Discord where you can coordinate with other players, but trying to find people in quick play, it's very hard to run into random players. Um, we'll go ahead and do this level one hunt, Garalusa Gone Wild. The procurement of rations has proved a considerable challenge for the folks of Lestalem, and one excessively aggressive creature has made the process all the more difficult for those brave enough to venture into the wild in search of supplies. The glaive is tasked with slaying the belligerent beast and helping stave off hunger in the city. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit quick play Thank just you. to see if there is anyone out here who needs help. Um, the game is so dead that literally if you're playing with another player and you just tell them what mission you're in, wherever they are in the world, the game will put the two of you Take together. It's, it's amazing and sad all at once. <laughs> 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 so 
So I see I have daggers as well as the katanas. I love that each weapon has a different moveset. Wow, that's kind of fun. Very easy to switch between weapons. I'm doing like nothing to this little practoir. I've scratched his paint. <laughs> and as you can see to the right, there is a 60 second timer. Um, I often make a joke when I'm playing comrades that we do what glaives do best. Wait, there are going to be a lot of loading screens, uh, a lot of waiting. It's just part of how comrades was put together and works. However, if you're in the Discord, you do have a chance to uh, use that, that opportunity to talk to people. So it's not nearly as boring. And, it, and we take the, um, I'm not even sure what those are called, the tramways. Oh, look, level one. My strength is 26, little flexed arm. I'm ready for this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so they assign us some AI friends. Uh, all of the AIs do eventually have personalities. Everyone has their favorite AI or an AI they can't stand. Um, so you'll get to know them as we cycle through the different ones. And there is this tent where you grab food. It really doesn't matter what food you grab. Food kind of acts like an extra life. So if you get knocked into danger or something kills you, if you have food in your pockets, you get back up. If you don't, you get yeeted back to the stellum. Oh, and I wonder, can I go up on the tent? Uh, let me see if I can... Will it let me warp up there? Yes, it will. <clears throat> so I just want to do a quick pan too, because different locations will all look different. But there's Rock of Ravata. You can definitely see things are starting to get dark. Um, they've done a great job of sort of making the grasses brown. Things are beginning to get bad, and Comrades isn't quite chronological, but as it goes along into the higher missions, you'll notice things are getting worse and worse. <laughs> Why is everyone better than me? They're all level five. No fair. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's go with daggers. Oh, come here. I can see where these would be good food animals. They definitely have a lot of meat. Oh! Step on me, no. Ah. I'm trying to hit their horns if I can. There we go. Thank you, Garalusa. I cannot see. <laughs> Alright, nope. I need that face. I need that face. Awesome, I Garalusa. So that big blue barrier is Jenica putting up Omniguard. Um, that's sort of an area effect. And it also makes it so I can't see you, which is one of the reasons why I don't like Jenica. <laughs> it's a love-hate relationship. Oh, me munching grass. No, oh, I want those horns. On the face, on the face. Yes, more horns. Wow, I wonder how many people a whole herd of these would feed. They don't really go into it, but here's a good question. And something interesting to notice is this one, let's see if I can get away from him. So like that's a normal one, but this one's kind of green and purple. And it even says mutant, Geralusa. That is a star scourge infected animal. 
Um, and you will start noticing over the, the game that they do increase in later missions. There may be similar missions, but the herds are more infected. I don't know why I love this game so much, but I do. I love it on so many levels. <laughs> and it's Exciting first battle to prove to Monica that we know what we're doing. <laughs> Alright, there's one. Oh, oh, don't give me that face! Give me that face! Yes, got it. Ooh, he's a big one. Uh, this way. No, I'm stuck behind the bush. I, I want to try and kill the little one. Boy, what faces! Yeah, they might be making me flop a little like a fish, but what do you want? I'm level one, I got nothing. Alright, I'm gonna try and start working on this big guy. I just want to hit the horns if I can. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, that worked. I was going to say he's facing the other way, but then he started flinging people around. Ouch. Oh yes, while he's down, horns. I need those horns. Come on. Oh, did we break him? Yes, we broke him. Great gorilla attack. everywhere. Raw meat. What the heck? I'll pick up raw meat. <laughs> Ooh, primo prime rib. That sounds better. But I do love that often you can go to these locations and look around, and especially if you spent a lot of time in main game, you know exactly where you are. Um, it can even be a little heartbreaking sometimes to see what has happened to places. Welcome back. Monica! Well, let's dig in. One can't wage war on an empty stomach, so eat up. Alright, so we got a great Garula tusk, some fur, bones, a couple little tusks. That's a pretty good haul. Selecting the perfect arsenal is key to successfully completing one's missions. Use Sid's remodeling station to strengthen your armaments. 
and imbue them with new abilities to give yourself an advantage in the field. So it always starts us back here. Um, sometimes when you go by people, they will say something different. I peered over the ramparts to get a look at the situation outside, and I wish I hadn't. Those demons are terrifying. <laughs> then don't look outside, sir. Um, I think for each sort of phase of the game, they have about two things they say. Let's see. You ever seen little Mob Buddy? He's a cartoon character, real popular in the Crown City. I'm not a Marlboro guy, but this thing was pretty cute. Aw, very cute. Sorry about the sliding around. I have a little bit of stick drift going on. Nowadays, everyone's searching for something. Some folks look to the old legends for hope, but we're helpless without our king. Yeah, not a lot of people know what's happened to the king. Um, some people are obviously not hopeful. I bet the chocobos are all extinct by now. No! I wish I would one while I had the chance. Oh, even that thought is heartbreaking. No! All right, and there is a truck. I know I cannot access the truck yet. I think there is one more group of people. Oh, there's two. There's one right here. Work with me, controller. They say demons have the power to invade your mind and take over, like body snatchers. You don't think it's true, do you? No. No, I don't. Um, but that's a really good point that rumor is starting to take over. Hello, Zillaby. Thank you for joining. Yeah, you missed a little bit of the beginning, but basically I just got brought to Lestalem, which has become the bastion for the last of mankind. As you can see, uh, <laughs> they're putting lots of people here, refugees are gathering, and we're slowly figuring out how to defend the city. Ah, Nowadays, Lestalem's known as the City of Light, the last beacon of hope left for mankind. That's why everyone's gathered here. Refugees are pouring into the city from all corners of Eos, and it's our job to keep them safe from the demons. Okay, we glaives so... fight for hearth and home, and this is our home now. Hearth and home! Um, so I understand the refugees being here, but can you please, please explain who dragged the car in here? <laughs> Resources, maybe? I'm not going to question. Right, the talk I mean... of the town, kid, thanks to those photos. You want See if I have any money yet. Do I have any money? Yes, I do. So one of the biggest secrets to this game is that your gear and your weapons are your actual character stats. So I am going to, as quickly as I can, buy two extra weapons because the more you're carrying and the more stuff you can put on them, the stronger you'll get. So what looks fun? I already have a katana and daggers. I think I might do... Oh, I should do one of the shields. Pleasure doing business. And if I have enough, do you guys think I should do shuriken, mace, or polearm? I am happy to pick anything if chat has an opinion. I'll give it just a second, see if anyone has doesn't look like it, so I guess I'm going to play with shurikens because they're fun. Hey, come again. Mace? Okay, I think I have enough to still get a mace. You want weapons? Oh, we maces are so painful. <laughs> it's like someone would pick the mace. Yep, I can afford it, so I'm going to do it. doing business. <laughs> hey, come again. Oh, I just look at all this trash. It's amazing. Okay, so I'm going to come into my gear and I'm going to rearrange things a little bit here. I like having my daggers right there. Don't ask me why. Let's go ahead and put the katana there. I guess it doesn't matter. Otherwise, shield and we'll use that maze. And you can see on my character stats in the lower left, before I think I had something like 26 strength, now I have this flexed arm of 84. So really, even just like equipping weapons will help your strength early game. Crown's guard sure has been keeping busy. Core barely shows his face around town. Guess that means there's intel out there that needs gathering. Or a shield that needs training. For the record, I ain't got nothing against the Crown's guard. 
just wish we could have come together sooner at ceremony. Things might have <laughs> turned out different. He said to the lamppost. All right, let's see. We have some power. What's up? All right, so my first job is to power up the town. That crafting table is very important, so I'm going to see if I can figure out which one goes there. That's to a new hunt. Supply station, I don't need. Is this Iris? Yes, that is Iris's apparel store. Remodeling, there we are. I would like this. Just think of what we can do. Yes! Sid's remodeling station is up and running. Thanks again. So I'll go ahead and peek over here really quickly. Let's see if I can talk to Sid. Can I talk to you? I think I can. Maybe not. I can just craft. Say, ain't you one of them's on Reggie's security detail? You didn't Why, help yes. him much, but maybe you can do something <laughs> for me now that Ouch. I my powers back. You see that baby over there? I was using her to remodel weapons for a spell, but she ain't getting much love nowadays. Do me a favor and put the old girl to work. Will do, sir. Will do. Sid's remodeling station can be used to craft new weapons, use materials to upgrade your arms performance, and imbue them with new abilities. Choose materials to use as catalysts that will fill the boost meter, fill the meter to boost the weapon's stats, and increase its level. Max out the selected arms level to remodel it into a new weapon. This is about the worst tutorial they could have given you. Um, I actually have a crafting video on my YouTube channel. It's under the same name, Melia Mucks About. It is my most popular video, which shocked me because this is such a dead game. <laughs> but the gist of this is that you have to meet a we weapon's requirements in order to get it to level. And I am going to... Let's see, we'll look at this mace, maybe. Um, so this mace requires some strength materials. And I can tell that because on the right-hand side, there's that flexed arm with the eight by it, and there's little teeny tiny gray bars under it. Got her all so one of the reasons you. I was really wanting to break those tusks is because you can see they give me a, a little flexed arm and then the fist, which is our defense. And early game, you really do want to concentrate on strength and defense. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw these on. One, two, three of them. Why not? And you can see suddenly I'm going to get plus six, plus three. This is how you make your character stronger. I've seen worse. So I just recommend for anyone who's playing this game, really do learn the crafting. It you helps immensely. And I did break that really big one. That gives me a plus three strength. We'll go ahead and throw that one on two. Um, and it will give me a skill. Undaunted means that I would have, uh, what is it? I think it's against a larger enemy. I get a bonus. Bone Crusher breaks things more easily. I'm going to go with Bone Crusher for now because right now we just need to break as much as we can. Not to get more materials to put on my weapons. This is a game of putting stuff on your weapons to get better stuff to put on your weapons. That's it. That's comrades. You can tune out now. <laughs> Uh, and then I'm just going to pick one of my other weapons to sort of be a junk weapon. Probably the katana. Got her all tuned up for you. And I'll throw some of these other things on it. This one is probably going to be junk and not go up, but I can do some defense. Why not? We'll just put a lot of defense on it. Although, this one requires strength too. Let me see if that may, that may see good defense. You find anything good out there? It's only plus one, though. How far would it take me if I put all 11 of these on there? I'm going to do it. That ain't half bad. By the way, Sid will never tell you that you're making a crap weapon, even if you're making a crap weapon. <laughs> I think he's just happy to have someone who is so interested long. in crafting. <laughs> Um, but now if I open up and I look at my character stats, you can see my little flexed arm is 93. I have a defense of 36, so I'm already getting a little stronger. Uh, let's see what else we can open up. Ready to get powered up? 
I probably want to get to that next mission. So I think that was this line, a tangled web they weave. Roger. Let's get things fired up. Perfect. And I don't think I have enough to open. Do I? Yeah, I, think I do. I can open up Iris' shop. <clears throat> I love how the lights go on whenever you open Best something of luck. up. Thanks. Oh, I can talk to him. Talk. Remodeling ain't magic. If you want to make something new, you need the right parts. Next time you're on the outside, see what kind of scraps you can find and bring them on back. All right. Kill the things, drag stuff back. Got it. I don't want to shop. I want to talk to Iris if I can. Oh, no, it's gonna make me shop first. Hey, you're a member of the Kingsglaive, right? I don't mean to bother you out of the blue, but would you be interested in buying some used clothes? It's for a good cause. I mean, they're not all used. I actually sewed some of them myself. Oh, anyway, she's so look, cute! Got a second. <laughs> Purchase articles of clothing at the clothing shop. So I don't hey recommend there. wasting a lot of your gill here early game, but you can get all kinds of things. Um, these conversations are stickers that you can use to communicate. We can buy more hairstyles. Uh, so this is really where you get a lot of your character customizations. Clothing, we have King's Glaive outfits, some t-shirts. Um, one thing I really do love about this game, uh, a Laura Croft outfit. <laughs> Glasses, face masks. Um, one thing I really do love about this game is just how much you can do. Come again. And it really is an all hands on deck. Everyone from the gas station attendant to Sonya, who was studying frogs, to fighters and military men, we're all fighting the demons now. I foresee great things on your horizon. All right, so we have a new hunt. This one is level four. A Once again, choice. I'm going in quick play just to see if anyone is around. Um, I'm probably not going to end up running into anyone or playing the multiplayer tonight. However, I will I be going into the Discord that I mentioned earlier, the Final Fantasy XV subreddit Discord, um, when I do need to find players, and I do recommend playing this with others. Not only is it way more fun, but you get multipliers whenever you have other people in your party. <laughs> And so it just makes the grinding and some of the other aspects of this game so much easier. Let's get that mace that someone wanted me to have. Oh, mace is stuck. <laughs> They're so slow. Charge attack. <laughs> they do a lot of damage, but... Oh, painful. Shield. I wonder if the shield works against spiders. We might have to try that. Uh, depart with AI. And do notice that the way we're getting to these locations, which I think is amazing, is we're taking those tramways that you saw in the main game. And there was a little bit of complaint that this was an open map like the main game. Honestly, it doesn't bother me. Um, you still basically just show up at the location. Did I get some food? Yeah, I got some food. Looks like we have Guts Co. Yura generally runs the sigil untouchable, which means he provokes everything and everything attacks him, and essentially he dies a lot. <laughs> he is the person who takes one for the team. Delilah is usually a healer, and Guts Co. Guts Co. is, uh, let's just say he brings fireballs to when you're trying to fight a free. <laughs> I still love everyone's higher level than me. <laughs> so rude. Alright, let's see if this shield works against spiders. Can I run him over? <laughs> Not as well as you can with goblins. Aw, oh, I am sad. Let's see, how are daggers? Daggers are good against these guys. My preferred weapon against the spiders is a bazooka. I don't have one right now. <laughs> and you can really only do that in one mission called Departure, but 
best use of bazooka ever. Can you imagine the calls that like the hunters are getting? We went to our house and it's covered with 20 giant spiders! <laughs> yep, got to be in a mage. I suppose I could try the maze. These guys are slow. <laughs> My spider smashing maze. Oh, knocked me out. <laughs> and honestly, just have fun when you're playing this game. You know, it's, there's one thing about optimizing, but if you're laughing, if you're enjoying the gameplay, you're doing it right. <laughs> There's a big one! <laughs> Woo. I think I dodged that. <laughs> oh, big smash! Hey, the mace works really well against them. It's so slow though! <laughs> I can put up a barrier. I'll protect you, Yura! <laughs> See, and there's Yura provoking it. He just stands in front of him and claps so that they'll come and attack him. <laughs> and suddenly, the battle music left, so we knew the spiders were gone. Look at this house. It's like held together with sheet metal. The peeling paint. Things are definitely getting worse. You can see too the trees just aren't looking all that healthy. Oh, I know where we are. We're kind of near um near that lake, the slough. Damn it to the spider! Mace is probably overkill. Yep, over there's that um the meteor where Titan was holding. Spiders everywhere again. Yes, that arachne sickle claw. I needed one of those. <laughs> Little lightning zap on that spider. That was funny. <laughs> back here, little one! I almost feel bad using this maze. He throws his whole body into it. <laughs> ah, no! I totally got knocked over. <laughs> Delilah went flying. I saw that, Delilah. I'm not the only one getting knocked around. <laughs> Yeah, see, I'm not touching my controller at all, so that nice little stagger limp is my stick drift. <laughs> see if I can get in place for a group photo. Me and my team. We got this. How many more years do we have to do this? Oh yeah, no one knows. <laughs> Which reminds me, when I get back to Listalem, I should see what that publishing contract was. Glad you made it back. Me too. Dinner is served. So for being a side DLC to fifteen, this was way bigger than I thought it would be. It's still soul. smaller than other MMOs. It's nothing like the size of, say, fourteen. Um, but there's still a lot in here and a lot of really nice Easter eggs, particularly if you played and loved the main game as much as I did. 
and it fills in some really interesting gaps. Um, but once again, it is not chronological, which is weird and will make more sense later. So I'm going to run back up the stairs. And before I forget about it, let's see what that publishing contract said. Ooh, I do have some info. So about the Kingsglaive, special task force of the late Lucian monarch. The Kingsglaive served King Regis until his untimely end. He lent them use of his magic. They in turn lent him their prowess in combat. And together they fought to defend the kingdom from all who would do her harm. Until they didn't. And yeah, there's a movie about that. Though indebted to their liege, not every glaive pledged their loyalty. On the eve of the treaty signing ceremony between Lucius and Niflheim, a faction of rebels conspired with the Imperial operatives to sabotage the peace proceedings. The Empire set their scheme into motion the following day, and the royal delegation was all but helpless against the Imperial ambush. The chaos that ensued spread outside the citadel, setting insomnia ablaze and sending all hopes of an armistice up in smoke. And so once again, those are the events of the King's Glaive movie. But I think it's also to point out, we are one of those glaives. This is definitely a story where you were one of the traitors, um, which is a really interesting choice. The politics that motivated the insurrection that day hold little relevance at present because the world went to hell in a handbasket. Our entire world has been overrun by demons and plunged into night eternal. The surviving glaives seem to recognize the severity of our situation and have put past grievances aside in order to fight together, no longer for hearth and home, but for the well-being of all mankind. So once again, everyone is working together, which is interesting. But another fun question is, notice this piece of text is not signed, but it was obviously written by someone. Um, so there can be some pretty interesting questions there. These other three are just kind of on how to use swords. Um, how to cast spells, and how to use all the weapons, so I'm not going to bother going through and reading those. We have some character dossiers, which I will probably take time looking over a little bit later. I thought we got that contract, but maybe it's not something I can read. Interesting. Double check, I didn't see it here. Doop, 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 nope. So... You're the talk of the town, kid. Oh, oh Thanks that's to right. Those photos. 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 Everyone gets so tired of that, photos, but I happen takes. to enjoy the photos. If you see I'm one sorry. You like, <laughs> I can frame it for you. Actually, hashtag sorry, not sorry. And you get a lot of terrible photos, but sometimes you get some pretty fun ones. <laughs> Libertus dancing. Ooh, Iron Giant. I bet that was supposed to be a really cool one of core. More Iron Giant. Okay, that one I'm keeping because it's sort of the first memory of going into the city with all the cars. Like I said, not often spectacular things, but sometimes insanely spectacular photos. There's an entire channel devoted to them on the FF15 server, um, and it, it is amazing to see the shots that people get. Alright, uh, let's go ahead and come back to our crafting table real quick. And on this... Tana, I think. I'm going to go ahead and add that Arachne Sickle Claw because it gives us Poison Touch. And the ability to poison things is really nice. Hmm. I've seen worse. See you around. Alright. Let's see if I can open anything else. What do you say? And if anyone has any questions about lore or wants to talk about the game, always feel free to put it in the chat. I'm happy to answer them. Um, this one's going to have a lot more sort of quiet periods where I can chat about things. Let's see, that's the supply station. I don't need that yet. Uh, maybe I have to open everything? I don't know. We'll open this one first. All right. The power supply is online. Ooh, nice. 1,200 gil. Roger. Free money. Let's get things fired up. All right, supply station. We hire an attendant. It's now up and running. Fulfill certain conditions to start receiving donations. Well, now it's my turn to get to work. <laughs> oh, it's Holly. Holly is giving me a solo quest. Bye now. City of Light. Oh, trophy. 
Um, so one other hilarious thing about this game is the steam tent. Here's how you take a bath. <laughs> yes, I would like to be clean. Because you do, as you go through missions, get dirty. Especially if you're fighting Marlboros out in the swamp. Uh, so let's see, I think Holly's back here. You guys got anything to I say? I remember watching Leviathan rise out of the water that day. You would have thought it was Shiva the way I was frozen in place. Eh, it's kind of funny. Look at these trash piles. <laughs> the stall of it's so sad. This used to be a city filled with meat skewers and dancing and music. <laughs> There's people I can talk to as well. Yeah. I'm not complaining about our rations. I'm glad we have them, but what I wouldn't give for a couple of those skewers they used to sell in the marketplace. Ah, uh, I was just saying that! <laughs> the name King's Glaive's got a nice ring to it and all, but in the end, Tread was right. To them, we're nothing but rats plucked straight out of the sewers. But you know what? We're the luckiest rats around. After all, King Regis chose to give us a chance. In a way, he saved us when no one else would. I haven't forgotten what he did for us. Have you? Huh. So that must have been a loyal glaive. Uh, I haven't forgotten. I'm really, really sorry, and I'm trying to make up for it. <laughs> what did you think of the front gate? That was all Sid's idea. He insisted on it. A classic like her at a VN display for everyone to see. About all the cars that they use to blockade. Oh, that's hilarious. We could always use more media shards. If you happen to come across any while you're out in the field, could you bring them back here? And of course you can see the meteor shards and the power plant in the back there. Um, who knew that one day the entire world would depend on meteor lights? Gotta admire Holly's stamina. Must be tough for a woman her age to work such long hours. At the same time, she's the most reliable gal we got. The Laville is off limits to regular civilians for the time being. The city wants to make sure we save space for refugees. Huh, so interesting that they're saving space. All right, I think that's everyone, so let's talk to Holly. Well, well, welcome to the Glaive. I hate to bother you right off the bat, but I need your help with something. Otherwise, the whole town could be in trouble. Libertus was right when he said I could count on you. Well, let's get to work, shall we? All right, before I undertake this quest, I'm going to see if I can very quickly change controllers because I just realized having any kind of drift for this will be horrible. All right, so my apologies if there was a quick flicker in the stream. Do you read me? Yes, yes, Thanks again I for read you. Out. Ah, you're up on the roof. Use R2. Uh, sure, let's do this. See the ropeway on your left? No. <laughs> left, left. Okay, left is this way. That one? That's the one. Oh, that one. There's another line on your right, but it's been out of order for some time now. I was hoping you could handle the repairs. We use the cable cars to haul those meteor shards from here to our thermoelectric incinerators. Both lines need to be up and running to properly fuel the plant. And if the plant loses power, so does the entire grid. Watch your back in there. Just Place the whole city, depending on me. Real nasty ones too. <laughs> like a pack of rabid dogs, but more demon-like. Oh, Somebody chat so says they were about to say my other left. Yeah, I'm not great with right and left, so. <laughs> All right, I'm switching off of mace for these guys. But barriers are nice too. You can actually stagger if you do it right. There we go. It's always a good place to practice. And things are attacking you. Ooh. Yes! And if you time it just right, you get those counter attacks, which can be helpful. Leave me alone! Ooh, 
He tried for me. Alright, oh, I still love these crystals, and it's so rare you get to see them without the fence in your way. Just phenomenally beautiful. And part of the story is so well thought out, not just there for decoration. Alright, are we going this way? Yes, I see monsters, so I bet this is the right way. Oof! And when they glow lightly green, it's because my uh, poison touch has poisoned them, so that can be a really useful skill. Ah, there's one up on the walkway. Let's try uh, getting you up here. Take the elevator to the upper level. Yeah. First, I'm gonna see if I can get on these barrels. Aha! I can. Yes. For a well beautiful pan. Wow. Huh. Rare opportunity. Alright, it's kind of dark in here. Oh, okay, that must be the elevator. What happens if I go over here? Don't go in there! Oh, they get nasty! <laughs> Alright, well, you can access the room elevator! There. <laughs> they were all nice until they weren't! <laughs> Best of luck. So there aren't many solo quests. Uh, is there a way out? Aha. Uh -huh. There aren't many solo quests in this, but I really do think that over time, had they continued production, the way they structured this, they could add anything to that mission list. And I think they would have continued to develop stories and add new pieces. Um, so it really is kind of heartbreaking when you see how cool little things like this are to know what could have been. But I am so grateful for what we got. All right, I'm switching to daggers because I can throw them and hit flying enemies. No, no. Or I can just flail at them. <laughs> I can warp! Don't make me warp up there! <laughs> Bug. Ouch. The combat really is nice, though. It took me a while to get used to. I do like Comrade's combat a little bit better than 15. Oof. Oh, my shield's red because I have no magic. Alright, bugs! Bugs have been squished! Okay, maybe it's still flopping around. Oh, come on. <laughs> there we go. Dead bug. All right, so it wants me to warp up there, but once again, I'm just taking... We, we never come back here, so just taking a moment to enjoy that view. Wow. All right, uh, fixing a cart. All you need to do is replace the busted fuse. You should be able to make it to the car in a flash. Ooh. Ah, you can see why I changed controllers, because... This is a spot where you need a little precision. <laughs> and if he was randomly walking... Oh, look at that! Crystals everywhere! Uh, okay. I guess I need to be over on this one. Oh. Oh, oh, heights! And yes, you can fall off. I have done it before. <laughs> so it's not like there's safety rails. It does just back you up and lets you try again, but... Alright, uh, hold L1 to target an ally. I don't see... Oh, oh, an ally yet. There we go. And that's also how you heal, is L1 in triangle. Uh, hit square, okay. Uh, wiggle this stick back and forth, okay. Hey, look! I fixed it. Well, Repairs complete. Thanks a bunch. Watch your step on the way back.
Ropeway under renovation. Yeah, so he'll hold L1 to target a comrade and then press triangle to blade warp to that person. That will pull people out of danger. However, like I said earlier, you can today. always get near them you did and the heal. the whole town a huge favor. Plants up and running once more. If we get back to capacity, we could power the whole region. Woo! Power the region! Exynor's power plant is fully functioning once again. Send power to other outposts and expand your range of operations. This is how you get your new mission. We've been dealing with lots of technical difficulties lately. I bet you have. All right, so let's go back down and see what our map looks like. Oh, hey, I don't think I've talked to you. The folks at Exynorus have given us hunters unlimited access to their cable cars. Believe me, riding the ropeway's a lot safer than trekking out to the boonies on foot. First, you'll need permission to board, of course, but I'm sure Monica would be happy to help you with that. So I didn't do it in main game, but there are actual quests where... Let's see I remember can... watching Leviathan rise oh, out oh, of the water that, that day. You would have thought... Um, but there are actual quests where you go and you help fix those tramways too. So it was something that you were aware of, which I think is really interesting. What's up? Yay! So now we have our big, larger map. You can see it's very similar to main game. That's where the meteor was. Our goal is to eventually get power all the way back over here to Insomnia. <laughs> but unfortunately, you can't just go right. So we're going to have to take the long way. So we are going to start just powering things up. Transmission complete. All right. So I got some more meteor shards. And this is leading to one of the tombs. No, not enough power. Best of luck. All right, I need one more mission. I can barely keep up with you. Uh, should I go for spiders again, or should I go for the little meat? Eh, I suppose I'm gonna go for the level one for the sole fact that we can eat those. <laughs> Very well. I don't want to give Monica more spiders. She does all our cooking, and I don't like the thought of that. <laughs> Be careful. So Comrades is also going to be the last of the DLCs. Um, last time I had played Episode Arden, and we've pretty much finished out. There are some missions and things in main game that I could go and do. Uh, but for the most part, I have finished out the Final Fantasy XIII main story except for these little bits that get filled in with combat. So I'm also looking at what I'm going to play next and two of the things that are on the table are I may be doing Stray, um, which I hear is a lovely short game. I know that it's where you play as a cat. And the other one is Obzu, which is by the makers of Journey and is sort of an exploration game of the sea. Um, so if anybody has any choices, I think we had one vote for Stray from a couple of... Uh, streams ago and I'm just kind of feeling out what people would like to see me play next. Both will actually be blind playthroughs for me so there won't be a lot of discussion of lore or in-depth story, more just me going ooh and on ah panning around at things probably. <laughs> Maybe screaming if Stray has parts where you have to run away from things. Oh, can of fish. At least I know this one is safe. I'll take it. <laughs> ah, Sada! And now, I didn't play Royal Edition, but you may recognize Sada. If you do play the Royal Edition game, they added in parts that had comrades, and I think Sada is the one who, like, lost a key to get somewhere. They're like, that idiot lost the key! <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm ready to depart. I don't have a lot of equipment to adjust, so... The loading screen's loading. Not too bad on the PS5, though. Oh, faces. I need to be aiming for faces. I forgot. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's part of my um, crafting tutorial. I really wanted people to have something that they could do early game because one of the problems we run into a lot is people show up and ask for like what are the best weapons or you know recipes and people give them recipes that require like level 99 components which doesn't help when you're level 1. I mean it is helpful but just not at the moment. <laughs> so one of the things that I did was I made sure to base my crafting video off making a katana using only materials from the first level 1 to 10 missions. And by the end of it, I think I made a katana that has something like 280 strength. Um, so with a little bit of planning and grinding right here in the beginning, you can really set yourself up for success. I am probably not going to do that. I'm just going to keep kind of crafting with my... I sort of know what are good materials and how to make them work. <laughs> but if anyone is interested, please do feel free to check out that crafting video. Uh, and it has the recipe as well, in case you want a nice easy start. And a big part of it is breaking these spaces to get those coins. Tried to roll over me! That was rude! I see that one coming in. Alright, let's get a pie. And while everyone's fighting, I'm just going to do one of those quick sort of pan. Yeah, you can see how brown everything is. Everyone's like, what are you doing? Get down here and help! It's fine. Wow. Chase that one! I want the close one! The camera does have a bad habit of fixing them from super far away. Come on, let's go! We can do it! Oh, we hit it so hard a mystery meat tin fell out! No, 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 not touching it. Ooh! Yeah, that poison touch is doing some nice work for me. Another one, yep. Thanks, Jenica. I wanted to not be able to see what I'm doing ever again. How did you know? Alright, uh, this way. Kind of keeping an eye on the AIs. I want to break these horns, but I want to make sure that I'm fighting the big guys so that I'm hitting the horns and they don't just kill him. <laughs> ah, no, no! Face! I need your face! Oh, he's vulnerable! No, I want the horns! Let me through! Alright, and now, since the game will be over, or this mission will be over when he dies, I'm gonna try and break some of these horns on these little guys. And the AIs really do try and help. They're not terrible, but there are different kinds of missions in this game, and as we'll see later, they are terrible at escorts and defenses. That's where you're really going to need other players. <laughs> um, the AI try, they just can't. I am going to kill you before you get your coin. Thanks, Jenica. Thanks for being right in the way. Ah, yes, I got it! Okay, now we can come big up. I like the little message from Gupto. I'm out of MP. You're a mage. It's your job to control your MP. I have no control over that. <laughs> uh, he's trying to run away. Now I feel bad. Alright, good ruler for... Oh, oh, thought I'd see if I can 
And you can chase these guys. They don't like it when you're behind them, so... <laughs> Torturing the AIs. <laughs> been a good group shot. Welcome back. Thanks, Monica. What delightful meal do I get for bringing well, back what like in. eight tons of meat? <laughs> Ah, uh, we got lasagna, because that makes perfect sense. I'd be more than happy to cook for you again sometime. It's quite therapeutic. I'm trying not to pan too fast, but I do love the little celebrations around the table. Everything may be falling to pieces, but they find joy in each other's company. <laughs> There really are so many beautiful things about, particularly this piece. It just brings everything together for me. And oh, when I came back as Noctis and stepped out of the crystal and you can't fight all the demons, you, you just kind of go to Hammerhead and Talcott's driving you. I wanted to stop the truck so bad and fight all the demons and it hurt. And the, this, this game here, comrades, filled that hole in my soul. It absolutely did. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and check my photos really quick. I am Hold noticing all that... The photos my guy takes. If you see one you like, I can frame it for you. Uh, that's actually not bad. <laughs> I will go ahead and keep that one. Eh. Like I said, lots of junk, but occasionally amusing or good ones. I always come and check photos. <laughs> Look at my hair. <laughs> oh, so fun. Um, I am noticing that in real life, it's about 8.30. I do try and keep my streams to an hour and a half just to make them um, fairly reasonable for people to fit into their schedules. If you did join and you like the way that I'm streaming, um, I am Melia Muxabout and I'm streaming every Monday from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time. I also upload all of my raw streams to YouTube under that same name, Melia Muxabout. Um, and as always, I just wanna say, you know, Thank you to everyone who is stopping by. Thanks for supporting this super long streaming journey that I've been on and letting me prattle on about one of my favorite things in the world. Um, I really do love 15 and I'm so appreciative to have people who I hope are enjoying it along with me. So thank you and I look forward to seeing all of you next week. <laughs>